Since the early 90s, Kalita Smith has proven to be one of the most versatile actresses in the entertainment industry. She has been in showbiz for so long, we can't possibly name every project she's been involved with, but she's most famously known for playing the role of Wanda McCullough on The Bernie Mac Show. She has also battled zombies on Z Nation and provided us with some laughs while appearing on Martin and The Jamie Foxx Show. I just need a small favor and I will get you anything you want. Okay? Oh, well, let's see. Prada purse. Gucci shoes would be cute. Gucci, hoochie, whatever you want. I'll get it. As much as we've seen her gorgeous face in theaters and on our TV screens, Kalita's private life has remained a mystery. But as always, RRG was able to uncover some surprising information, including her troubled upbringing, her association with the Black Panther Party, a terrifying experience that almost took her life, and her interesting thoughts about monogamy. Before we get started, don't forget to grab something to eat at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand. Take advantage of our Black Friday sale and enjoy our assortment of delicious brisket beef jerky and bacon jerky. Okay, now let's jump into today's video. Kalita Smith was born on January 15, 1969 in Chicago. Sources report her dad left to go fight in the Vietnam War, and his absence led to the disintegration of her parents' marriage. She and her twin brother Eric were raised in Oakland, California by their mom. Kalita was raised as a Black Panther cub, meaning she was the offspring of a parent of the Black Panther Party. She attended a school called the Oakland Community Learning Center, which was founded by the Black Panthers. Because their school was constantly being infiltrated by the authorities, the organization decided to work in conjunction with the television show Rebop, hosted by LeVar Burton, to shed some positive light on the organization. Out of all the students at the school, they chose eight-year-old Kalita to interview Huey P. Newton, the co-founder of the organization. Even though she was young, she realized the importance of her interview. She even wrote the script for her own narration. She was young, bright, and beautiful. But sadly, her spirit was destroyed at a very young age. Kalita told the LA Watts Times, I grew up without a father, around pimps and <laughs> dealers and athletes. So my self-image was being destroyed. I was first introduced to the virus violence as an infant. I experienced the violence throughout my childhood, six years old, eight years old, 14, 19, 24. After earning a degree in political science from a local junior college, she became employed as a jazz dancer for a bit. Since dancing wasn't enough to pay the bills, she found work as a saleswoman and as an administrative assistant. Unfortunately, she wasn't the ideal employee. In a Reddit Q&A, Kalita said she sucked at all of her jobs and got fired from most of them. At the age of 21, she got fired from her last 9-to-5 position. During an interview with the LA Sentinel, she said she was dating a talented basketball player who showed her what it meant to commit to a dream. She watched as he disciplined himself, and he eventually got drafted into the NBA. She also stated he's now a Hall of Famer. Kalita told the Sentinel she didn't know what she wanted to do with her life, but she wanted to have the same type of passion that her boyfriend had. Now, you're probably wondering which basketball player Kalita dated. And of course, she didn't reveal his name, but RRG did some digging, and this is what we discovered. If Kalita was dating a basketball player from her hometown of Oakland, and they were somewhat close in age, and he was drafted into the NBA sometime around 1990, which is the year Kalita turned 21 and got fired from her last job, and if this mystery player was already inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame by the time she gave her May 2013 interview to the LA Sentinel, then we're pretty sure her boyfriend was this guy. Okay, now back to the story. Kalita was trying to find her passion, so she enrolled in an acting workshop. She said she was awful at first, but she knew it was something she wanted to get better at. She told the LA Watts Times that acting saved her life. Given that actors are constantly required to dig deep into the emotional realm, it was impossible for her to run away from her own emotions. She said she believes her personal tragedies were essentially gifts that helped her create more depth within her craft. 
She moved to Los Angeles around 1993 and began working in theater. She told the Washington Times a casting director saw one of her productions and invited her to appear on In Living Color. From there, she was cast in several projects, including Living Single, House Party 3, and Martin, to name a few. When she landed a recurring role on The Jamie Foxx Show, she was finally able to purchase a new vehicle, a white, drop-top Volkswagen Rabbit with white interior. Kalita continued landing parts in several popular shows, and she took pride in working hard to obtain all of her roles. That doesn't mean she hasn't experienced some shady situations, though. She told Comedy Hype, No one's giving me anything I didn't work for, but I've always had things taken away because I would not. She added that she doesn't have to put out to get anywhere in life. In 2001, she auditioned to star alongside Bernie Mac in his new sitcom called The Bernie Mac Show. Bernie was still riding the success of being a part of the original Kings of Comedy, and Kalita told the Vivica A. Fox podcast that because of his popularity, the auditions were packed with so many amazing, talented actresses that wanted to work with him. Kalita had to go through several auditions and was told no twice. But she was brought in to give follow-up studio tests and network tests before being asked to film a screen test with Bernie to see if they had the right on-screen chemistry. Kalita earned the role of Wanda McCullough and The Bernie Mac Show made its debut in 2001. The program eventually won a Peabody Award, a Primetime Emmy, and three NAACP Image Awards. Working with Bernie was like a dream come true. She told the PC Principal website that he was a class act. He was always well-dressed, always on time, and was always courteous to everyone. She added, he was one of those people who embodied what it meant to be a king. Even though she was working on one of the most popular black sitcoms, Kalita didn't think she was receiving the recognition she deserved, especially from black media outlets. So she reached out to the people at Essence Magazine and asked them why she wasn't given the opportunity to be featured in their publication. After they told her they weren't interested, she booked a flight and popped up at their New York office. Kalita told an online website she was granted a meeting with a young lady who was in charge of the print operations. Kalita asked her, How do I cross over if I can't even have a presence in my own community? If I don't have a presence in my own community, no one is really going to acknowledge what I'm doing. She then asked the woman to let her know what it would take for her to finally be granted a spread or to be on the cover of their magazine. That's when the woman pointed to all of the Essence magazine covers displayed on the wall, and in reference to the people on those covers, the woman said, they're iconic. Kalita clapped back by telling the woman that she and the people on the covers were all descendants of iconic people and they should all be celebrated. However, her words fell on deaf ears. In 2006, during the time the fate of the Bernie Mac show was being decided, the cast went on a short hiatus. It was during this time that Kalita came down with walking pneumonia, a mild form of the infection that has symptoms similar to a cold. She had the illness for a couple of months and had no idea until one day the air passages inside her lungs collapsed. Kalita was rushed to the hospital and was placed on a ventilator. She told the Hype magazine that she didn't see any white lights or the things other people who have near-death experiences claim to see. But she stated, I do know I left and then I returned, and that's all I can say. Thankfully, she was able to make a full recovery. The Bernie Mac show ended in April 2006, and Kalita has managed to stay booked and busy ever since. She even decided to branch off into the world of stand-up comedy after Bernie called her one day and invited her to open for him during his month-long residency at the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas. What Kalita didn't know was that Bernie was calling her from the hospital. And sadly, Kalita would never get the chance to open up for him because Bernie passed away a couple of months after their phone conversation. While quarantined in June 2020, Kalita told the Hype magazine she was getting cabin fever and she was ready to go out on the town and show off her new implants. She also explained that she was quarantined with her boyfriend, but she didn't reveal his identity. Kalita doesn't have any children, and she has never been married. She has explained that she's down for sharing her life with a man, but she's not completely sold on the whole idea of marriage or monogamy. 
She told Comedy Hype that marriage sounds like an arrangement that doesn't give you any privileges. She also credits being unmarried for the reason she has remained so youthful all these years. Since Essence Magazine didn't want to give her her flowers, we will. We respect and appreciate Kalita for all of her contributions to the entertainment industry. Today, we celebrate her, her accomplishments, and her perseverance to overcome all of the obstacles in her life. If you enjoyed this video, let us know down below, and thanks for watching RRG.